Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Disney rides come in all shapes and sizes, but sometimes the magic is interrupted when the rides malfunction and break down. It's bound to happen from time to time. Through submissions from viewers like you, these never-before-seen breakdowns give some rare perspectives into many of our favorite Disney rides. Oh my gosh! If you've caught a fail or malfunction on camera, you can submit it to www.tpmvids.com for a chance to have it featured in a future video. Now be sure to keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside as we count down the top 10 Disney ride breakdowns, malfunctions, and in-show exits. Part 10. Number 10. Two siblings named Reyna and Cameron were at Disneyland Paris and had seen Big Thunder Mountain break down. I think TPM and Vids is already on there. <laughs> they always wanted to experience a breakdown for themselves. Well, when they rode Big Thunder Mountain on their next trip, they reached the last lift hill and this happened. It's broken. They finally got the ride breakdown they had always hoped for. Now, when the work lights turn on, there's usually a really good chance you'll get to experience an in-show exit. That's Disney's term for when they have to evacuate a ride. It sounds a bit more magical. Now, a unique part of Big Thunder in Paris is that at the beginning and end of your ride, you pass under the rivers of the far west through a pitch black tunnel to get to the island. So during an in-show exit, the only way back into the main part of the park is through these tunnels. Yeah, I, I take all the stairs this way. That's why I was, I was <laughs> The stairmaster. Yeah. With all the elevation changes, there are quite a few steps. Here, Cameron and Reyna's family were led underground through the first tunnel with the lights on, which isn't something you normally get to see. They were definitely ready for this in-show exit. Now there's actually a brand new ready for my in-show exit design that just dropped in the TPM Vids merch store. It's available in a few different pieces, so if you're interested, the link is in the description. Now Cameron and Reyna's walk through the tunnel took about two minutes, and guess what? There were more stairs, go figure. These in-show exits really offer such a cool perspective into all of our favorite Disney rides. I just love them. Oh, actually, you guys are... oh this is the start of the ride, yeah. Number 9. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway uses a combination of physical sets and projection mapping to bring us into the cartoon world of a Mickey short. Well, when the ride opened in January at Disneyland, it was seeing a lot of interesting projector malfunctions, and many TPM Vids viewers caught them on camera, like Sidney Bennett. Pete's jackhammering usually shakes things up in the city, but this is just on a whole new level. Then in the factory scene, at Castle Club Co. on Instagram caught this. Restarting windows while the ride was still in operation probably wasn't the best idea. Then in that same scene, something really stopped them now when a viewer named Matt C. caught this. So the screensaver image says Dataton Watch Out. Watch Out is actually a multi-display software that manages all the different media elements on the ride, from the animation, images, to sounds. It then syncs all the media and sends the video signal to the 4K projectors, giving us what we would normally see. Well, here the program was clearly experiencing a malfunction with the video feed since the show audio is still playing without any issues. From my understanding, the same system is also used at Hollywood Studios, which never had these issues in the beginning. At least all these projection malfunctions are pretty amusing, including this one from Carlos M. Oh my gosh, what is going on? I mean, it's definitely a crazy ride right now. There's just so much going on here, but Pluto is really making his way around the finale. Number 8. 
over at Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, at NickDog underscore 246 on Instagram, almost made it through the entire ride before getting stuck in the final scene, when all of a sudden... Yes. Please. Yes! Yes! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Got it right at the right time. A lights-on view of a classic Disney dark ride is truly any Disney fan's dream come true. Dude, I've been waiting for this for so long. I love that all you hear, though, is the creaking of those little devils. Definitely saying this to TPM vids. Thanks for sharing it. (laughs) Hi. All right. Now, at this point, you're so close to the end of the ride that an in-show exit is literally only a few steps. Not much, but I take it. I'll take it. Number seven. This next one brings us on to Rockin' Roller Coaster at Hollywood Studios, and it gives us a little behind-the-scenes peek into the mechanics of the ride. So at Clund5395 on Instagram got into the loading area for the ride when it unexpectedly broke down. Freeways jammed. Now it's not every day you get to see the lights on in the launch tunnel. That's pretty cool. So Rock and Roller Coaster is an LSM launch coaster, and that piece that's moving backwards is what's known as the pusher car, and it connects to the bottom of the coaster train. The pusher car is propelled by an electromagnetic drive system called the Linear Synchronous Motor. That's where we get LSM. Well, in this breakdown, they were actually testing the launch system without the train. This is such a rare thing to see. Now, once the issue was isolated and fixed, they began testing the ride with actual trains. Here we go, here we go. But there were still some problems. I think it's just go down. Hey. Traffic's definitely backed up. Oh, here they go. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, after one failed attempt, they finally got the green light. I love their enthusiasm. I mean, after waiting here for 25 minutes, I think I'd cheer too. Number 6. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh at Disneyland is home to our next breakdown, and it was sent in by a viewer named Kaylin Taylor. Well, I think it's looking good. Oh, bother. Thank you so much. It's so excellent. You know it. What's up, TPM Viz? What's up, bro? <laughs> now, I know you're all excited, but for some younger guests, this whole breakdown situation might be really confusing. Oh, what's happening? You know what? Sometimes rides get a little bit stuck, and so we just have to wait here for a minute. What's Minnie and Pooh doing? What's Pigman doing? Isn't it the cloud? Why don't we hold up? Because it's raining. It's so adorable when kids ask questions. Hey, let's, let's send a picture to Lene. And I mean, they were making the most out of the whole experience. This is nuts. We got is stuck so many times. Really? Finally, a cast member arrived on the scene to begin the end show exit. Black bars and doors are going to open. Stay seated until we get to your room. I love that the step stool also follows the honey theme. Oh, no stress. Now, with this in show exit, Kaylin and his group were led the opposite way back to the beginning of the ride, since they were only two scenes into it. It's happening. Yeah, we were just talking about it. I know, we were literally just saying how we've never been on an in show exit. Can I do your intro? Let's hear it. Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. Not too bad. You got the job. <laughs> Throughout the whole in-show exit, everyone seemed to be in great spirits, and they were just taking in all the sights and sounds of this rare experience. We made it! Thank you! Number 5. One very memorable scene on Snow White's Enchanted Wish is when the evil queen transforms into the old hag.
It's a scene that's been there even when it was Snow White's scary adventures, but I've always been curious as to how this illusion is actually achieved. Is it a screen? Pepper's ghost effect? What is it? Well, it's a lot simpler than you might think. Take a look at this malfunction from an anonymous viewer. Talk about going for a spin. So the front of the mirror is actually made up of a white scrim, which can be seen here in this breakdown footage from Sir James Gamer Fusion on YouTube. Then the evil queen is obviously a physical figure. She's being lit from behind the mirror, which illuminates the scrim and gives us the illusion that we're seeing a reflection. She should rotate at the same time as the old hag, but clearly she was trying something new. When it works, this is such a convincing effect. I love the scene. Number 4 I don't think I've ever been at Disneyland when Indiana Jones Adventure didn't go down at least once that day. How about you? Well, in this next breakdown from a viewer named Hayden, I think someone stared too deep into Mara's eyes because the ride was being very temperamental. By this point, Hayden had been stuck here with the work lights on for a good five minutes, and no announcements were being made by any cast members. I think it's a financial exit. But then... All cast members report back to tower immediately. Hmm, well that doesn't sound like an intro exit to me. By this point, ten minutes had passed, when all of a sudden... Oh. Oh, we're just continuing in light mode. Oh! oh. The power of Mara prevails. Right on cue. Oh. What's that? In a lot of these indie breakdowns, the ride audio always cuts in and out, but I have no idea why. And they're off. Bye. Oh. There. Ooh, duck. This has to be one of the best spots to break down with the lights on, don't you think? At least they were able to get a detailed look at the indie animatronic, who was still moving, which is strange. Oh, just kidding. Now, it seemed like the ride ops were trying to let everyone off at the unload station without having to do an in-show exit. But after sitting here for 15 minutes, the Jeeps were finally powered down. Listen to those hydraulics. Ooh, it's so eerily quiet. By this point, it was evident that an in-show exit was actually gonna happen. Before they knew it, a cast member came to the scene to let everyone out of the vehicles, and they proceeded down the drop in a single file line. Once they exited, Hayden and the rest of the guests were all given lightning lane passes to use for another ride. Number 3 Smuggler's Run is pretty much a giant video game, and when a viewer named Luis Terrazas was on the ride, something in the ship just wasn't right, and it wasn't long before it was game over. You don't normally get to hear the soundtrack this clear in show mode. It's usually drowned out by all the sound effects and Hondo's dialogue. Now here, for some reason, it kept playing while Hondo was doing his stall spiel. This usually plays if there's a holdup with another one of the pods after you're done the ride. But unfortunately, it takes a few minutes to reset all the complicated systems on the Falcon. And in the meantime, well, we've got a little time to pass. Now this wasn't the only strange thing that happened because it was also the cue for the Major Malfunction. Literally. <laughs> yes, you are right, but it is no cause for alarm. Well, this is awkward. And of the complicated systems of the Falcon. And in the meantime, well, we've got the little time to pass. How is your flight? All right. There's a bunch of unreal yeah. engine icons. <laughs> Oh, there. Oh, wow. Windows <laughs> so Unreal Engine is a 3D computer graphics program which appears to be powering the graphics in the ride. 
It's clearly failed, but if you look at the desktop icons, each of them says Big Bird. Now it's not that Big Bird. When Galaxy's Edge was being built, Big Bird was a codename used for Smuggler's Run while it was in development. To this day, on the back end of things, it appears Disney still uses that name. So that's kind of cool. There is a sign that said, make sure your drivers are up to date. Send it close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a crash report. Instead of crashing the Falcon, you crash the program. This new mission is coming soon to a smuggler's run near you. That look of fear, though. After exiting, Louise and his friends were given a re-ride in a different Millennium Falcon pod where they could go and get another container of coaxium. Number 2 Test Track is a ride that we've seen break down inside the show building, but it's kind of rare to catch the ride breaking down outside. Well, that's until today when a viewer named Hunter McCann caught this. Oh no! <laughs> what just happened? Oh, oh. I don't know. Stop. Dispatch stop initiated. Work plane is coming on. Show all data coming off. Now, these powering down announcements don't always mean an in-show exit will be taking place. This is my first ride breakdown, you know? Okay, so I'm going to have to open up the hood. When I do this, the windshield's going to come down towards you. Oh, oh man. This is, a, we're getting the best ride of all, Hunter. This is cool, man. This is my first in-show breakdown. There you go. Just that far, folks. These two cast members seem to isolate and fix the problem within about three minutes, then... Oh, baby, here we go, here we go. Hold on, Tim, hold on. They were on the slowest trip around the track. Oh, no. I mean, this is slower than Spaceship Earth. Whoa, we're inching in there. Inching in is one way to describe this. Hold on there, Hunter. Hold on, brother. Oh, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. After about a minute at a snail's pace, the car finally sped up to the end of the ride. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Number one. With May 30th being Splash Mountain's last day of operation at Disneyland, I thought it would be a fitting ride to end the list. Now this breakdown was sent in by a viewer named Marissa B, who was with her son AJ and some other family. AJ, what's happening? We are stuck down on Splash Mountain. The wait time says, says it's temporarily closed. How long have we been here? Give or take eight minutes. This little drop before the finale is a common place to stop, but in this case, no announcements were being made. They were stuck in a real log jam. The music's off. Yeah, they shut the music and I'm guessing the animatronics off. 15 minutes had passed and cast members finally came onto the scene. After safely getting out of their logs, Marissa and her family were finally getting the in-show exit they've always hoped for. <laughs> This walking tour of the finale room was such a treat because all the animatronics were still in full show mode. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a kind of rare thing to see because usually with an in-show exit, all the animatronics are powered down. But in this case, they were able to get up close to so many figures. Everything is going, it's just no audio. Yeah. So strange. This was any Disney fan's dream come true, and honestly, for me, this would be an ideal last ride on Splash Mountain. So have you ever broke down or experienced a malfunction on a ride or attraction at the Disney theme parks? What was that experience like? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.